Okay, yeah. I think it is working. If right. anyone, yeah, sign into chat. I don't want to sign into. <coughs> Do you have like YouTube open at the same time where you can see? People's... I'm asking. Wait. I need to double check because my girlfriend will tell me if it's working or not. Because last time when I did some sort of a live stream with Reynaldo, it turns out I muted him for like 20 minutes at the beginning. Oh, yeah, I think I see it. It says uh, Carver Design. Okay. Design Diablo yeah. 1 Art Challenge. Yep, live now, yeah. two watching. We confirmed it works. Fortunately, the portraits in the globes, because I did, I have the globes. For <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was so cool, man. All right, I think it is live. Yeah. Like everything is now working, so yeah. Do you want to continue on? Like, do you want to make your own carver? Because I I'm doing like a carver, this type like the blue gummy boy from Diablo One, or do you want to randomize something for yourself? Uh, it's up to you. What would you like me doing, man? Uh, I don't. I, mean, I, don't... I will randomize the number two, so the num the next card that there is in the <coughs> line. So you can start the new one, and I will I will do the the carver, or you continue on it. So we won't be doing the same. Yo, you got a black knight. <laughs> Yo, the next card was a black knight. No, no. <laughs> I think both of us should do it, man. Yeah. Yeah, we totally should. Okay, this is not That's a harbor stream anymore. I will. I don't know when I will finish this bad boy. Then this is like a black knight stream. <laughs> we was waiting all of this time for yeah, it to happen. And then... This is a perfect like timing. Black knight. Nice. Yeah, okay, yeah. no nah. more carver. I will That's send like you the image, the reference. Five. That's like my favorite unit in. Diablo, in all of Diablo, should I say? So yeah, uh, yeah. I have sent you the the image. So, uh, everything should be working right now. Yeah, uh, where's the chat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I, I unfortunately, <coughs> need to, as I said to you, to stream the entire screen. So hopefully nothing will like pop out all of the sudden because. It decided it won't like capture the the screen. Also, be careful with it. You also are sharing the screen, not the application only. Oh right, okay. Yeah, we need to like yeah. purely focus and on the Black Knight. <laughs> so. Hey, you said you sent me uh, something, but I can't. Yeah, it's like the the image in Skype only. Oh, it's got, I, I didn't get it. Did you send it to from another account or something? Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, you sent it from the. Ah yeah, from, from the the other account. Yes. <laughs> the Black Knight. Okay. Yep. Finally, something interesting. It's funny. I was doing a quick little. Uh, um... Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was just yeah, kind of doing the study of that, and then the Black Knight came up, which is perfect. Yeah, also, if anyone is like watching and have any sort of uh, questions or whatever, or you have any artworks you would like us to, I don't know, overpaint on, uh, feel free to feel free to send them or ask them. I don't, I have no idea how I will manage this, just I don't know, send a link or whatever, and yeah, pretty much all. And now we can make like a proper challenge because this unit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For right. me, it will be a lot of like searching for different cool shapes. I kinda could continue on the last one that I had. Yeah, I was I gonna say. Yeah, you could have. You could have uh, went with that. But I won't feel fair because it will. I mean, it will be a bit more fair because I won't be backing behind you. Most likely you will finish this one much faster. <laughs> so, but <laughs> I kind of want to make it from the scratch. Oh man, it's crazy because uh, I feel as though like uh, 
it, it, I'm just having a weird bit of nostalgia drawing this because, uh, yeah, I've, I've drawn <laughs> this unit so many times in different ways. <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, oh, how can I, how can I do it in a different way now? I only need to like increase the volume for myself because the stream decided to like mess everything up. Ah, oh, the damn programs. Okay, now it should be even. Yeah, and the kind of hard thing will be figuring out the pose for me because like that one that I had was kind of okay-ish, but I don't want to like repeat it. The pose will be like hard thing to do. Maybe I will just copy the pose. When you are making some poses, how do you approach the music? Like figuring Ooh. out the pose. Uh, I I do like to do gesture stuff sometimes. Uh, yeah, I kind of like draw very loosely. You know, just get like a mannequin type of thing. Find out where the main elements are gonna go, and then yeah, that that tends to help. Um, gestural stuff really does help. You know, find out where the flowing lines are and stuff, and and then work from there really. And you prefer to go like really hard with the geometry and everything or like with a really clean shapes or do you like to like scribble a lot? I think I prefer scribbling. Yeah, I think I Kind of like, scribbling. for example, Karl Kopinski does because he like scribbles a lot when catching. Yeah, and then just refine because, you know, we've got the uh, powers of Photoshop, right? So we can kind of just... Um, uh, knock back the layer, reduce the opacity, draw it again, add some more, you know, refinement and stuff. So yeah, I, I, I kind of, kind of like that. Oh, I hate clean line art, man. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. that. Good to spend forever on clean line art, man. Also, making like a really clean and a tight lineup is extremely hard. If something is really hard in drawing, it's like making a really clean line art. Yeah. That and drawing ellipses is, is also hard. Kinda can't figure out the poles. Man, I would. I, I wish they brought this unit back in Diablo 4. Or even Diablo uh, Immortal. You know, anything. Like in Anna Diablo, because this was like the coolest unit ever. I think there was <laughs> something similar in Diablo 3. But I'm not sure how it looked like. Mm, not sure. Not sure. They did bring back the Balrogs in Diablo 3, and Israel was in there as well, but that looked a bit goofy looking. I, I, I didn't really like it from. I don't remember the Balrogs from Diablo 3, honestly. But the one in Diablo 4 looks really nice. And it looks. Yeah, that yeah. one is really good. So I feel if they already made like Balrogs from Diablo, like again, this time they will make like Black Knights and everything in Diablo 4, like properly, because they were kind of in a sense in Diablo 2, because this was the Hell Knights, the Act 4, Yeah, so, but they, they were, were like really oh thin and, and they had this awful like Iron Maiden spell that basically will kill you if you are like a melee character. Yeah, those weren't it though, man. I'm telling you, those were like, um, they were like skeleton knights, you know? It's weird. I don't know why they call them doom knights for it. They just, yeah, they were too skinny to, to be like a proper, proper black knights. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Not only that, if they were skeleton, because you know, the, the black knights, I don't imagine them as skeletons. I imagine them as like, you know, like a monster, humanoid type of. Uh, yeah. figure in there so, or even like yeah. a reanimated armor with some sort of a spirit inside of it yeah 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 because you know when you see the death animation you know it does look like a spirit kind of um um leaving mm -hmm. the, the the armor yeah, but, the death animation is the absolutely best thing in the entire oh game and the sound the, sa the sound is sound oh amazing. my god it's just so good so good Time to test those things. 
And also a really cool part is the Black Knights are actually... I, I think... I was kind of say that, that they might be my favorite, but I kind of feel I prefer the Steel Lords, like the bluish ones. Yeah, I, th I think so too. I think uh, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Because the black the black knights, I don't remember what level they were in, but I feel that the blue ones are a bit more iconic. Sense. So, so the black knight, as far as I remember, in the original Diablo um, one, if I could recall, there was only one. There's only one black knight, and it appears. Um, in you know, you know the area where Diablo is in, right? The Lagdanan. No, no, no. You, you know, mm -hmm. um, Diablo, the last oh, boss. Uh -huh, right? uh -huh. that road, you know, in just that little confined area before you open the lever and it comes out. There's just one uh, black knight, where there's one, uh, you know, Steel Lord or, or these knights, right? Mm -hmm. That's different to all the other ones, and I think it was a black knight. And it's weird because it's just one. And I remember completing the game again and again, and only seeing that one there, and it doesn't spawn anywhere else. You know, it's really weird. I won't confirm it because I only have been playing Hellfire since like forever. I, I know I the original Diablo one I only passed like maybe once or maybe twice. But always I have been playing Hellfire with the like the extension. It's hard to even remember the word extension. Now it's all <laughs> DLC and everything. I forgot about the extension. Also the Lord of Destruction was called the next I think. You, you, expansion. You played, um, do you played uh Beelzebub, right? The what? Uh Beelzebub. Beelzebub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beelzebub. I did. Uh, at some point I managed to make it work finally. Oh man, see that, I think that, you know, it had like tons of, you know, cool stuff and it had, um, you know, black knights that spawned everywhere else, you know, mm. and uh, they had... It also oh, make, they... gave them charge, so... Yeah, I was just about to say that, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. they had that as well. That was quite scary. <laughs> yeah, and also I need to say hello to Ataberg, he is always watching the streams. And actually Ataberg... It kind of sounds like a Steel Lord type of a name. It would fit <laughs> to the game. So. Yeah, it does. That's, that's true. And yeah, yeah, I, I need to, like, we need to make those double streams a bit more often because I do believe it's a bit more fun in a sense. It's definitely easier to talk about something for like two hours or <laughs> because. It's really easy to run out of topics when you are like sitting all alone and trying to talk. <laughs> Especially man, when there I, are not I, many questions. I, I know I enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it, man. It's like uh, so much fun. True. Only the timing is sometimes hard to organize. Everybody has like all these different things to do. For artists, especially. Like since most other artists have this like weird ass like sleeping schedule, like life schedule basically. Yeah. We tend to go to at really odd hours. It, it's it's kind of um, yeah it's 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 kind of uh, weird like um, oh I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, also, so if anyone has any questions. Like, I feel quite, quite uh, I usually feel quite comfortable drawing and stuff. I just feel a bit pressured now. I haven't drawn any, oh, that's what I was trying to say. I, I haven't drawn any like personal light in, in a while, man. And uh, yeah, it just feels like, damn, man, I've got to, I've got to do justice uh, to my favorite unit. <laughs> remember to save the file. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Is a good point. If this one will like die on me, I would cry. <laughs> but man, tell about luck. I had so many monsters. This is like, let me count. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. This is a twenty-ninth monster. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and this is the first Black Knight that appeared. 
screen. What makes it kind of a little bit even more special because uh, we basically started the like knowing each other with talking about Diablo. So <laughs> yeah, the yeah. randomizer was a really nice, was a really generous day. RNG was on our side. <laughs> it's meant to be. Uh, most likely, I already said it on the stream uh, the last time we talked, because uh, if anyone is like wondering, uh, when I was like talking with Naimul for the first time, we started talking about Diablo, and I like convinced him to play Belzebub, and I wanted to play the Belzebub mode with him, and I couldn't manage to make it work, and I basically then like addicted you again to Diablo. <laughs> oh, you're, you're the one that told me about it. Yeah, damn, I didn't know, I, I, I totally forgot you are the one that told me about it. Yeah. <laughs> I got so hooked onto that game, man. Oh my and god. It, that time you also had like a fuckload of work to do, like a really huge amount of work to do, you told me. And now I like came in with Diablo again. <laughs> and <laughs> you had, you couldn't like continue <laughs> on your work because Diablo. Oh my god. Ah, it was that it was so satisfying playing it again though man you know you, you told me about titan uh titan <laughs> now yeah. it, it's just it triggered that itch again man it's just yeah, triggered I mean, that itch. titan quest is a really good game <laughs> i don't say you should play it but you should <laughs> <laughs> so true yeah you know if, if you're saying it, i can complete it straight away you know what it's not you can't complete these games straight away because what i did with um with uh, Beelzebub. Actually, yeah, mm. no, I did I did complete that. It did take me a while to complete that. But after completing it, oh, my God, I went through Nightmare, Hell, and mm -hmm. I think I stopped after Hell difficulty. And then I think there was one more, a Torment or Inferno difficulty. And, oh, my God, it got so much harder, man, and it required so yeah. much grind. Even when you went to, like, Nightmare, like the second uh, type of uh, uh, hardness, uh, it was already like really much much harder in terms of like the level so i don't think i reached hell because i was playing with necromancer i believe and uh, the necromancer was not that strong i would say it was fun but it was like really hard to do something sometimes because i wanted to make some summons and the, I was playing at first on multiplayer mode, like no, on the newer version, on the newest version, where the guy buffed the the necromancer, like the summons were like really strong and they were capable of doing something. And in the version that has no multiplayer, uh, it was still not as strong as it is uh, in the in the multiplayer version. And in the multiplayer, it was a really cool experience because then. There you can summon things and the summons will actually kill for you. And in the base version, they wouldn't kill that well. They will basically be like a meat. And yeah, uh -huh. that's, that's pretty much all they, they could do. Yeah, it's funny. I, I played uh, Diablo 2 again. Um, mm -hmm. I played it on um, with a mod as well, Project Diablo uh, 2. So mm -hmm. I played that mod, and uh, I played uh, Druid. You know, I don't think I've ever played a Druid before in any of I hate Druid. Always do. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to disagree. I played it, and uh, apparently it was overpowered. I didn't know. And, uh, well, that current build or, you know, that patch or whatever, it was overpowered. And the gameplay was just uh, really tedious, you know. You just level up the build and put your points in your, you know, your dogs, your bear, and then that's it. You just literally run around and your minions just do everything. And you don't really feel like you're playing that much, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't really a fun build. I didn't I didn't feel like I, I was getting any skill from it or anything like that. And Yeah. Yeah, the, the cool thing with mods is they bring, like, the new life into games. And I kind of wonder why more games don't approach, uh, like, making this type of a games in an open way. So they, like... Okay, this is a game, here are the tools, mod it as much as you want. We will help you with like the modding community. Because usually, after like finishing a game for like, I don't know, 10th time, uh, there are stuff that just should be in the game, but they, they are not there. And for me, the 
best example of this type of a thing was with Gothic too. I know you have not played it, but mm -hmm. in Gothic, for example, you had for uh, you had like stuff like blacksmithing or a bit more advanced crafting or something like this. It was there, but it was like really limited. Like you couldn't specialize in it. And for example, in my case, I always really liked to like be a blacksmith. Just go mine something and just blacksmith it from in the game it's just fun and also it's a really cool way to earn money uh, in gothic uh, but they like was not including it like properly in the, in the base version and in the mods they did it uh, to a, an extent where you could like base the entire gameplay on it, crafting your own equipment and with diablo they did exactly the same thing with all the crafting because they took basically what is best from some games and put it in the, in this in this belzebub mod and also they brought in the Horadric cube and the run runestone everything and this was really fun diablo fun to 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 have this that there oh yeah 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 that was man the 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 yeah i, I didn't feel like i wanted to go back into uh, um Project Diablo, but it's because I'm just now waiting for uh, Resurrected to come out, and yeah, that's and just... I think I am also saving up my like gaming time for Diablo Resurrected right now because I really wonder how this game will like look like again after playing it for so many years. Yeah, I I just hope they you know I think a lot of people complained about it having um, tons of bugs. I hope they get that stuff sorted because people were worried that, you know, in this, um, you know, uh, the open beta or whatever it was, the world beta and stuff, they just said that it was way too late for it to have that many bugs in it. And I think people just kind of got worried. <clears throat> I think, I mean, the like, okay, the game can have some bugs, but now I also think people are really over dramatic with all the bugs and everything. Uh, because they like expect like everything to be perfect and since the games nowadays are like much more complex like light years more complex than they used to be okay even if this is a remaster like a lot of things can like go south when you are like trying to make old game work like a new game and you are doing this some sort of an like overlay where you can switch back and forth i can imagine how problematic this is so mm. yeah and in diablo you always need to go to the south so <laughs> no wonder it does not work properly but i mean uh, they also seem to listen to the community and really like take the feedbacks in the account yeah so yeah that, that's the that's the most um promising thing about um what is the name? Vicarious Visions, I think it was, right? Uh, could be. I don't remember, but it sounds familiar. And yeah. most likely it is. Yep. The, another thing that I kind of think I really need to study some armors like the, the breast and the stomach area because I have no idea how the hell the look like. Or how it should look like. You know what? I know I get confused with that as well. I think I need to have like some real, uh, real um, armor references. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just kind of making stuff up. For drawing like freely, what do you feel you managed to ignore for the longest part and get away with it? Like when you are drawing, for example, let's say. All the times you know this area is like really lacking but you were ignoring it for so long like purposefully that you kind of managed to like get away with it by using some tricks stuff like this. like let's mm. say hands for example for me like i tried to learn how to draw hands but she's just hard and i usually just like take a bit lot of references and almost like usually try to trace them if it's something a bit more complex than like hand hold. Hmm. What would it be? Uh, hands. I think I haven't been 
too uh, behind hands or lagging with hands that much. Um, only because uh, I feel... Uh, like, I, I mean, it does not have to be hands. Like, what is, like, yours? Your thing? Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, like, uh, with the hands, it wasn't that, because I was drawing, like, a lot of, like, anime Street Fighter kind of stuff, so you kind of have to uh, mm. draw hands and stuff, right? For mm. me, like, uh, proportion stuff, or legs, and the proportion of legs, I don't know, that... And the proportion of figures, you know, that that mm. has always been, you know bad for me man like I, I can draw and construct everything you know um you know i can get the leg i can draw you know fingers that look right but then when you look at it look at the proportions of it all it just looks so like wonky and off you know and uh that, 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 that's always been uh i think a problem legs are also just hard to draw like they bend weirdly and the muscles are weird on legs everything is so <laughs> I can relate to this, especially the pelvic area, like the pelvic area and like the, the groin and everything. This is like just a weird thing to draw. It's like weird. Oh my God. Yeah. The, the whole, you know, hip and pelvis, like, you know, I've, I've studied that, you know, so much, but it just, it's just so weird, man. Even to try and think of it in 3D or like, you know, try and rotating it and mm -hmm. thinking of it. No idea, man. You, like, just, you have to simplify it and, true. and do something. Especially with like this rela weird relation when, you, for example, the torso is twisted and the leg is like risen up or something, like someone is kicking and what does the pelvic pelvis even do this time? Or uh, what the spine even is doing? Like the spine is okay. When someone is standing, it's relatively easy to understand. But when someone is like kicking and doing this wheel weird as poses then the spine is also a mystery to me also a hard thing but on the other hand it's not something that is like really uh, that much needed i would say you can like get away with it even if you have like a really limited skills with with stuff like this especially with programs like does 3d that everyone seem to use nowadays that also kind of oh, surprised yeah. me so many artists are using does yeah, I, I think I tried using it once and uh, yeah, I just didn't get around to using it as much as I would like. I think it's pretty damn powerful, man. I used it only once, like I had to learn how to use it because once a client wanted me to paint his characters, characters uh, having like a really intimate moment. I think I told you about this, I, I think I even sent you the, the painting with like this really strong blue light in it. I never posted it anywhere though, I think. Uh, and there I had to like use dust to just make the interaction between the two persons because it was, man, much too hard to handle. <laughs> like I, I was not able to like figure the construction and everything out. That's okay. Like drawing a human that is standing is one thing, but, but drawing two figures that are like Cuddling together really close to each other, like absolutely different scenario. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's 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 um, it's a shame and it's a difficult thing because you know I, I feel there's a lot of character design and you know. Um, you know, like uh, if you were to work for, let's say, Disney or these animation mm -hmm. companies or anything like that, they would, you know, you'd obviously re be required to know anatomy and character uh, character design and all of this stuff really well, right? Mm -hmm. Your gesture's got to be really good and everything, right? And uh, one key thing that I think maybe we don't practice enough is like the em emotion type of stuff. Right, mm -hmm. like um, you know, um, like expressions in the face, you know, happy, sad, and you know, different facial expressions or poses that you know emote um, uh, emotions, or, or you know, like um, you know, um, sad feeling or angry pose, or you know, like all, all of these different. I know with me, like I just tend to draw the generic, you know, epic, you know, pose, mm -hmm. and you know, you've practiced so much anatomy to be able to, um, you know, turn the pose or construct the anatomy, but just in all of the epic kind of positions, you know, that's not I mean, anything like emotive, which is like, oh, you know, that's like, like so important. 99% of the paintings will require 
screaming emotion, and that's all. If you can do someone screaming, you are good to go. <laughs> because, like, when you are painting a barbarian, like, barbarian will scream. When you are painting a monster and something is, like, fighting it, this someone will scream at the monster. Yep. And the monster will scream. <laughs> and everybody will scream, so... <laughs> and this is, like, this, this getaway tactic. Also with some hand gestures, there are some poses that basically will appear in every single piece that you will do at some point. Like holding a hammer or holding a sword, this is like a universal pose that everybody needs to know how to draw, like without any reference. And other than that, you won't need much more poses for hands, for example. Mm. And schools, as we talked today about schools. You could like practice them or you can just get one commission that has like a load of schools in it and just learn them on the spot. <laughs> what, what's that? Schools? Yeah, schools. What, sorry, how, how do you mean? Uh, like the school, the, the, the human head bone. <laughs> So oh, right, 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 right. I thought, I thought you meant learning in schools. No, no, uh, no. I was no, like, no. what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the accent in here now takes it to. How do we even pronounce it differently? Like school and school? Like. S -s skull. A skull, okay. It does make sense. Yeah. So school <laughs> is like a place, and skull through A. Skull is, the, skull is the bone. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, I feel bad because sometimes I feel as though uh, am, am I misunderstanding something? Or did I hear the conversation? Where, how, where, are we talking about schools or like fine art academies or something? I'm missing something. <laughs> uh, this is also kind of like the, the fun part of talking with someone who is like from abroad and with someone who is losing, like, using like this uh, I eat, I speak type of a language version. Uh, yeah. with like a vastly different accent because for example for me usually I prefer to listen to someone who is not from England per se like for example if someone is from Russia but they know their ang their English language and English language and everything uh, I feel it's b easier for me to understand like what they are what they are saying than someone for example from Let's say Liverpool, because once when I was visiting a friend of mine from Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool is always the is always the ridiculed accent. Yeah, uh, because when we were like going to the shop or something like this, uh, a lady approached me and she wanted hello Mikoe, and she wanted like some sort of uh, ask some questions, and she was like talking for two or three minutes straight. And I was standing there, like, okay, maybe back then I was not speaking, like, uh, nearly, like, as, this sounds kind of cocky, like, as, as good as I am now, um, because I had some problems with talking, now I don't feel I have this problem anymore. Uh, oh, English is really good, man. Thanks. But, uh, going back to the topic, uh, <laughs> it was talking for, like, three minutes, and i like, okay. I don't need to be good at talking, but I should at least understand what she's saying. And from the entire speech she gave to me, I was like, okay, I understand nothing. Like zero of anything she said. I like process in my mind. And after like being there for like three or four days, I started understanding first words. Like I felt that I am learning a completely new language. And the way they were talking like was weird. It was like mad. It was stupid in like most cases. And a friend of mine told me that this is like called a scouse or something like this, if I yeah. remember co correctly, like the way they are talking. And later I also discovered it was heavily influenced by all the sailors and everyone because it was like a heavily port type of a city. So, oh, you know what? I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. It yeah, makes the, sense. <laughs> True. Yeah, and after after he told me this, I was also like, oh yeah, okay. Now now it kind of justifies everything, because yeah, now it makes sense. <laughs> but still, uh, understanding them was like, I kind of felt they they were joking. <laughs> like it's impossible to to speak this weirdly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's funny you uh, <clears throat> mentioned that because. Uh, 
uh, I think uh, basically up north it just gets more and more difficult as the further uh, further north you go, <laughs> right? And uh, Manchester is also difficult. You know, uh, Manchester. Um, they call them Geordies, uh, Geordie. Uh, Liverpool is Scouse and Manchester Geordie, but they've got their own like funky accent as well. Huh? Um, it's funny because I, I watched the uh, you know UFC right, and uh, there's a guy who's from Britain. He's he's fighting this weekend. Uh, his name is Darren Till. He's a f- funny guy, right? Mm-hmm. But he's uh, he's from you know I think it's, it's not from Liverpool. He's from uh, Manchester, and everybody in the comment section of all of his interviews are like can somebody please translate i don't know what he <laughs> said <laughs> yeah please translate late this <laughs> yeah uh, i i know this but it's kind of funny usually this is like usually the thing that i hear that people outside of england prefer to talk with someone who is not from england because it's just easier for them to understand also since a lot of like places in in britain uh have like a really distinctive accents which is kind of weird because the okay this is not like a small island but it's not also that big that you have like a different accent like every five kilometers basically as far as i know like every single village has its own accent in a sense (laughs) and as far as i know the people from the south don't understand the people this is also what i heard yeah, yeah. Like it yeah, might yeah. be even impossible for them to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's, that's that that can be correct. So down down south in London, <clears throat> the accent there people call them Cockney. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's the, the, accent, the name of the accent down south is Cockney, which is like yeah, it's, uh, funny. Uh, it it <laughs> says something about everything. <laughs> But yeah, accents are funny. In Poland, we only have like two, uh, two areas like that, as far as I know. One is Kashube, so it's basically three areas like that. One is Kashube. Uh, it's like basically it's near Gdańsk, the city I live in. And Gdańsk is like a capital of of this place, kinda in a sense, uh, mm. or it's called like a capital of Kashube. And they have like extremely different language. I don't know how it originated, but you wouldn't like they would un- they will understand you, but you wouldn't understand anything they say. They just use different words. Uh, also, Gurale, so basically people from the mountains, like living in the mountains, they have like this really kind of funny way of speaking. Like for someone who is not like used to this language, this will sound just funny or, or silly to them. And people on Shlansk, because they were heavily, like, I guess they were were really heavily affected by the German language. And they they also speak in a different manner. So, but I have never been there, so I don't have, like, a lot of experience with it. But even after, like, hearing some, like, videos with, or some reading some texts from these areas, uh, I can understand why people have problems. I wonder, do you think I'd be able to pick up the difference between uh, regional accents in, in Polish? Uh, not so much. Like regional, I don't think. Uh, it's more like a small things like different words. For example, uh, we have different ways of saying uh, on the word to close the door or to go outside. Like, for example, in, in Gdańsk, on the north, we say idziemy na dwór, which basically means we go outside, because dwór, dwór is like uh, the open space outside, but it also means like a palace. Oh. Like, if you have like a really nice giant house, it's basically a dwór, a palace or something like this. Um, and the other places, I need to think for a second how they say it. Uh, it's so like weird for me. I don't even remember it. <laughs> uh, ah, the others say "idziemy uh, na pole," for example, which means we are going to the fields or something like this. Because pole, pole is basically fields. 
So they these things can like give you the general idea from where someone is is from. Or for example, the word uh, the pencil sharpener. Uh, like how many words for pen pencil sharpener do you know? Uh, for in English, it's just. Yeah, it's a pencil sharpener or sharpener. Yeah, you know, that's it. That's mm. what you get. Oh, I forgot how it's called. Um, let me check how it's, it's in Polish language. Because this word has like 20 different versions in Polish language. <laughs> and you will I mean, know, like basically this word can tell you from where someone is. So basically, uh, um, Na Ostrzyk is from Upper Silesia, the Upper Śląsk. We have this, na ostrzyk, ostrzałka, ostrzółka, ostrzówka, ostrzynka, ostrzyczka, ostrzytko, oszczytko, odstrugaczka, strugaczka, strugawka, temperka, zacinaczka, zastruszka, zastrugaczka, zastrugiwaczka. This is one thing. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if someone just remembers like this one and like if you have, I don't know, if you are going to some sort of a college or something like this, uh, and especially since I was in the art school, like in the Academy of Fine Arts, uh, when someone said, give me like temperówka, like give me the pencil sharpener, like everybody would move and look at this person and be like, the fuck you said? How do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was like, this is the way you say it. And then they proceed to say it incorrectly and then the whole debate on how you should say this word starts and immediately you know who is from where <laughs> and there are a lot of those things and sometimes they even mean different different things you will just know someone is from places oh well, yeah it's kind of fun but this is kind of like also the the charm of polish language because it is really complex and a lot of words are like taken from different nations. Because especially in Gdańsk, because Gdańsk also is like a port city. And if somebody was to learn Polish, right, what other languages will they have a better idea of? Uh, Russia, Uk Ukrainian, all the Slavic languages basically. Ah, okay. Like we with the west, west no east. Oh my god! I always forget which one is what. Which the right one is east, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we like their language is like the the eastern kind. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So for examples in. Uh, in Czech Republic, I think it's Republic, I don't remember, like Czech, uh, you more or less you will understand what they are saying. If someone from Russia approaches me and starts speaking, I will get the idea what they are saying. They won't understand Polish language that well, as far as I know, but, they, uh, but you will get the idea on what they are talking about. Ah. And I think, for example, in... Right, so I won't lie, because there was one country uh, that had some wars that were like, mm, like you had the same word, but the the meaning was completely different. So, for example, in Polish, uh, word czerstwe means like the the bread is like hard, it's stale, it's old. Uh, it mm. does not mean, yeah, it basically means stale in, uh, in English and in Czech, I believe, uh, I think it meant yeah, in uh, in Czech it means that something is fresh. So it's like the opposite, like the same word, and the meaning is like the opposite. So, uh, oh, Eric, do you know Mateusz Kieliszkowski? Yes, I, I mean I don't know him personally, but 
about the strongman there was a question uh, yeah do you know Mateusz Kieliszkowski do you follow strongman yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean I, 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 do, I do know the name and I did uh, mm. I used to follow uh, strongman quite a bit before so uh, yeah Maris Pudzianowski man my favorite uh, no, no, and no. Kielikowski so, Mat- he's the Mateusz Kielikowski he's the popular popular and the big he's the big prospect right from Poland at the moment Yeah, the funny part is he also looks like a Pujan a lot. Kind of fun. And he is also really good in the lift that Pujan was really good at. Especially in like towing the like towing everything, planes and whatever they tow. Oh right, right, right. So Is it is it on? Has it has it been on recently or something? I don't know. I know he had some sort of an injury, like quite recently, like he tore his tricep or something like this. And he was off for some competitions, but yeah, like as far as I know, not much is happening right now in Strongman. There were some contests, but with Strongman, usually there is this weird thing that they like, they don't, I don't know if they, they still do this, but they used to not stream the events and they will like release the events after four months like this especially in like a tv so you will like see something that is like four months old and yeah it it, it was a bit weird for them to do this yeah Mataberu just wrote that he's injured about for about like year and a half or two years I mean, this is also a thing that you shouldn't like push because at this level, like the things most likely will kill you if they like drop dead on you. So if someone gets injured, let it heal. So, yeah. I kind of feel like I do need to search for some references for a breastplate. Else. The breastplate is killing me. Oh, dude, your your knight looks so crazy, man. It, it reminds me of uh, the the knights in Castlevania. I you know, don't you know, remember how they look like, honestly. Yeah, well, actually, no, they don't really look like that. The, the knights in Castlevania look more like generic kind of knights, but they are meant to be dem- demonic and stuff as well. But like, mm. um. They they, uh, they 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 have tons of them. Tons of different knights were really like a big thing in uh, Castlevania games, right? And then the main one was called the Final Knight, and it was like a giant towering uh, mm. knight. Now I'm the the most recent knights that I kind of follow are the ones done by Kentaro Miura in Berserk. Just as I said, I started like reading it. Oh, he follows the proper. European, he's got everything like uh, referenced really well, hasn't he? Yeah, and the, yeah, the the thing is, like, I was hmm, all a lot of games and everyone, like a lot of games and different projects, they try really hard on like making the armors look like really fucking cool. And in this comic, it was like, okay, this is like a normal armor, just the helm helmet is slightly different, and I was like, wow, this this looks cool. Like, this is so casual, it's it's really different. <laughs> At this point because like nobody does it like everybody tries to go this for like this epic dark armor type of a thing like as we do right now pretty much <laughs> we are we are try harding <laughs> but but i really do enjoy the the design that he is doing you really well, have how, this like original type of a feel to it. How far have you read? Um, they just finished fighting with this giant slug, lag type of a monster. Jeez, uh, I'm trying to think. It giant was uh, it was like the the tenth tom or something like this, chapter twelve. Chapter 15, something. There was this guy with like one eye. Uh, the It was the 
the guy who wait give me a second how to describe it was this fat guy that was executing everyone at the oh. beginning like he was just trying to like rip like destroy heresy in his town is he was he uh, um was he a uh, uh, armored guy uh, no, before him there was like the snake type of a guy. And then uh, he he used to torture like the small guy that he like he cut off his legs and they were fighting like uh, he sent like one knight to kill kill him kill gods in the house of the I don't remember how like I don't know how to a bit better because like yeah, he had like two this. really strong soldiers but then he had to take care of him. it was the first time when the the five gods appeared or however you call them oh the, so it's, you, you, you're reading it from after the eclipse then i have no idea i don't know oh. i just i just went to the read berserk site and I'm just going from bottom to the top from like the, oh, the right, last one right, to the newest right. one so that, that means yeah, you you sh you shouldn't have met the God Hand yet. Mm. You've met the God Hand already. It was kind of like uh, they mentioned God Hand. No one knows. Like it it is not explained who they are. They showed that the gods don't like Griffith, and then they started showing the history of gods, uh, how he met Griffith and everything. But nothing is like really cl clear at this point. Ah, okay. So I don't know if it, if they changed the order or this is like the way someone should read it to understand it better. Because, but I felt it was relatively nice of a way to present it because now I'm interested like how, how it all happened. So I'm hooked to read. Oh, man. Uh, that's, you know, I, I haven't... I, I've read... I, I definitely read through them all, but... Um, yeah, so long ago, so long ago since I started reading, and uh, oh no, what's it doing? <laughs> Look, can you see my screen? Oh, uh, yeah, you need to basically like change the you need to grab this dot that you created on the bottom right corner. Uh, I uh, think you can, uh, it's not that. Can you see uh, shift? Can you see where it says shift? Small for me. You, you know, you know my uh, um, cursor. Can you see my cursor? It's it's got like a, a little white mark next to it. So that's a shift. Change a tool to like a um, control Z. Just just control Alt Z. Uh, as long as this dot like disappears, because I I know what the the dot is. It's the stupid. Um... Uh, color sampler, so I could take it off. It's uh, it actually appears quite annoying. Laugh. No, that, that's not the problem, though. You know, the, I think I told you about my problem before, right? When I start getting into a painting and stuff, right? And um, for some reason, my shift keys and my window key and my control key suddenly just gets pressed down and it gets held down. Has that ever happened to you before? Uh, it only makes everything not work when I color pick and I change the tool from color picker, color picker to color sampler tool, and then it leaves the dot that I believe you. It makes everything not work. Stops working properly. Okay. So I do believe if you get rid of this this dot, then. No no no. Yeah, I I, uh, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know how to uh, get rid of it. No, oh, yeah. I've Control got and problem. just press on it. Then it... Yeah, it's gone now. But no, it's, it's a different problem. So what happens on my computer, and it's, it's weird. I don't know if it's a Photoshop bug or if it's my, uh, you know, it's my computer or something. But mm -hmm. after a while, you know, when I'm working and stuff, my... Um, my uh, yeah, the control shift and keys suddenly either any of them gets held down, or the window key or the alt key just mm. suddenly just gets held down, and I'm thinking like, what what's going on, man? Really weird. Maybe if you are working on a laptop, maybe you are 
pressing something? I, I have no idea. Or how this problem. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, man. I know, some, right? I I know get, sometimes I when I was it. clicking on a button, it like was because it was like a laptop, uh, it was just like physically pressed down. But I don't think this is the case. Yeah. Alright, I think I've got my base. I am gonna start rendering. No, maybe. Yeah, uh, and I just fin like uh, maybe finish the sketch to like think about. Tell me. This. Uh, no, 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 no. Your, 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 your design has got so much more detail, man. So much more detail. I've just thought about like weird values and shapes uh, as an illustration. I've got my illustration hat on. You've got your uh, concept hat on. We can fuse them together later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do I approach this then? Do I? Uh, but I really, I kind of like think it's a really bad thing that just now I started reading Mercer because I felt, I felt like while reading it, that I really missed. Something like this, but it was is an important look at it, dude. A hundred percent, man. That that is um. That if I would, yeah, have... it's so inspiring, mm -hmm. man. Even art wise, is so inspiring. And that if I would have seen it like five years ago, I I would have better understanding of like what basically you can do with the design and everything like how you can play with it because i i always felt that in, in this regard i was kind of limited and because i was kind of afraid of making something like stupid in a sense but his artworks were go all out with it. crazy like he, he knows how to make a crazy good designs yeah, there's, there's um, plenty of times I've kind of had, you know, you've got your old, um, you know, reference files open and stuff, mm -hmm. right? And part part of my reference images were like berserk pages, you know, some mm -hmm. of the, I, I, I don't get how he done what he done, man. He, he, he draws everything himself. He thinks of the story as he draws and oh, it's just mind boggling, mm -hmm. man. Dude. That's true. Absolutely mind me. And also the part that I really like, that I really enjoyed, that I feel might be kind of overlooked, uh, is because on the first chapters that I were reading, I was like, I don't know what is going on. Like, I don't see the drawing. Like, it's not clear. It's like all this black and stylized and everything. And it's also nice, a really nice thing to look at is how he, how visibly he progresses with the, his drawing style. How clean the drawings are getting really clear if it's like really fast oh, oh, how yeah. he's like experimenting yeah. new shots new perspective so yeah started Just, yeah. hello sorry about that <laughs> yeah no problem <laughs> do, you know, do you know what happened it's so stupid man i've got a hotkey uh -huh. <laughs> I've got a hotkey that I'm trying to um, press for adjustment layer, and what mm. it does is switches off the ends of the call. <laughs> oh my god, this is stupid, man! I've got to make sure I don't press that again. <laughs> yeah, can you share a screen again? Well, oh my gosh, I'm not even sharing screen anymore. Oh, okay, um, wait. Yeah, it's like freezed up on. Make it work. Sorry about that. Um, no problems. The, the problems with technical stuff on those three. The daily bread. <laughs> okay, yeah. what button? I'm not, I don't, that's oh, it. Yeah, I'm not pressing anything. I'm not going to press anything. Okay. As the old master, no short. <laughs> 
Now we need to bring mirrors to flip horizontal. <laughs> This was actually like one of the things that also like uh, was kind of funny for me uh, back in the days. I was always wondering because like drawing symmetrical plots, traditional media basically sucks. It's just a terrible thing to do uh, to like draw everything symmetrically from the front, and whatnot. And I discovered because I was watching some. I do believe it was Stan Winston uh, art. Full of art, of sculpture, of characters. I don't remember how it was called. Like the the really popular one. And they mentioned yeah. that they used to. I think it was them, but I think they also did. That they used to draw like only half of a design, and when they were like presenting the design, they had like the small mirror, place it on the sketchbook, like mirror the. the... Oh yeah, 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 man! The kind of stuff that they did before man just to get things right mm -hmm. it's crazy have you heard of an artist called uh, Louis La Rosa? I heard the name but I don't I can't say that I work, so. uh, you, you'll recognize his work when you see it it's like he's a comic book artist and he's incredible draftsmanship like you know if you see his work right <clears throat> he's mm -hmm. um, each of the muscles have got like you know like mini muscles in them like everything has uh. got like a million veins and but you know when i when i say that it sounds like you know um just too much crass detail and it's not uh, tasteful but he does it in a way where it is you know he's got a good value range and the way he applies the detail he looks quite natural mm. and effortless rather than it looking you know overly um labored right so but he his it's funny because his his um characters right mm -hmm. um all, all of the male characters have got his face on it <laughs> so i i think what he does is like he has like a mirror and i think quite a few comic book guys uh, do it they, they have a mirror and then they just kind of you, you know take photos of themselves and, lucky them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> And take expressions of themselves and put it in their in their mm -hmm. in their work, which is uh, yeah, it's quite funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember like really back in the days when I just like started learning how to draw. Like I started actively learning how to draw. Uh, there was this chapter about like expressions. It was written. The book was written by Glenn Fabry, I believe. He uh, maybe you know him. Uh, he is like also one of the, the legends as far as I know uh, and he wrote the book uh, how to draw fantasy character or something like this that's a really oh. vague description but uh, in the chapter of on the faces he also said like you can draw faces from photos but the, the easiest way to like capture everything is just to uh, take a mirror go with it do it <laughs> So, yeah. When you are doing a line art, because now I kind of wonder if I want to do this way or that way, you usually you prefer to make like a really rough sketch, then make a new layer and draw in way clean lines, or do you like to like erase and paint sharper detail time? Uh yeah, I, I kind of like to erase and paint sharper details yeah uh you know it's funny you mentioned that because i had a you, you know the story of you know me doing line art recently for um you know that the company right and uh the 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 lines were it was so it got so tedious right and i don't know if it was the brush i was using but the way i was i was getting really scratchy lines and it just looked so bad and i felt excuse me i felt bad about everything right mm -hmm. But then I found a quite an efficient way, you know, personally for me um, in working. And that was um, with with uh, using non-transfer brush, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd have complete no transfer and I would draw, you know, in, in like a gray, you know, or, or something like a, you know, 50 like a yeah uh, like a gray color right 50 percent gray color mm -hmm. and then and then on top of that well i'd either lower the opacity or just just draw a normal gray and then make a new layer 
and refine it with again non transfer but you know with a smaller brush and with a darker color and for some reason i just felt so much more efficient that way you know instead of me scribbling out stuff i just felt i was moving towards a more detailed approach every time mm-hmm. and i wasn't like slowing down by like trying to perfect a line rather i was just staying fast but i was getting detail at the same time so i, I don't know just yeah i found it quite efficient for for me anyway <clears throat> yeah because like recently when i was trying to do some drawings i kind of was again like do i want the lines to be like really clean or do i want them to be like, kind of dirty but have this like feeling to them that they are like sketchy but click up or how to approach it and i think for the first time when i have seen someone like clean up the line art was in the feng Zhu videos where he was doing some death knights or something like this uh and and yeah and now i just kind of wonder if i prefer to work this way or that way because i always liked to have this kind of like under sketch underneath it like even if i paint something i really usually like at the end to take a sketch and just place it on like low multiply something over the colors it gives this nice kind of random texture it adds the grittiness ah. but on the other hand it's like raising the work that you have <laughs> so Yeah, in drawing in Photoshop, I do feel like it's just a matter of finding the right brush drawing, because I found really often that a lot of brushes are just with or just drawing. And I kind of wonder how this will translate to, for example, iPad because I was planning to procreate. I was using it for like a brief moment when I was like. Promised Land Festival, which uh-huh. Poland, and it was like really, really good. Like the feeling was really. Ah. Uh. Wondering to get one, and also it makes recording the videos for Instagram. That's always a bonus. Hmm. That's always a bonus. Yeah. Because well, like once I don't know if you have you ever like tried any video editing type of a thing. I, I've tried using After Effects a little bit. Uh, yeah, if you want to make like a video that will fit to a like needs of uh, Instagram, actually like a nightmare because you need to like squeeze it and like compress it, and then if you sped it up, then it like jump like crazy all over the place everywhere and it's just like problem after problem after problem constantly like one problem after another and like pre- even preparing the file to like make it look nice sounds of tedious job to do and i have never found any way in photoshop to like stabilize the video so you have this like not moving canvas and the image appears kind of like in a zbrush process videos i don't know if you have seen any but most likely you did when the sculpt is just like like rotating in place without the canvas. yeah yeah so yeah, it, yeah. It looks really, and the procreate allows <coughs> to just do oh. and i also noticed that a lot of like great artists tend to not draw per se but they like to do kind of like draw and paint at the same time so they kind of like work their values while drawing and for example i don't know are you following proko yeah, yeah a he, little bit yeah he does it I a lot like he's kind of like mixing drawing with painting at the same time or at least this is how i feel about his art. like he he uses like really fine lines but really often he just like really wide type of uh, lines. Basically, he works with the, not with the lines, but with the, I don't know how to even say, kind of like a brush strokes with, with pencil. Hmm. 
like he just basically flattens down the pen pencil on a side and makes this like really wide uh, wide lines oh yeah 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 that that, that is the, the kind of fine art way of working mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's it's really good for um I, I i've kind of had a bit of experience uh using uh, charcoals like that and it's so much fun man you really get into a zone with it you know mm -hmm. especially when you hold it you, you feel like a you feel like a fancy artist when you hold, <laughs> hold the charcoals yeah. the gesture is like doing the like this thing with hand <laughs> yeah yeah just want to feel like an artist <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but on the other hand, I also really liked, for example, Forest Email is making this crazy clean line art. But I don't know. I think the better the artist is, the cleaner the art, the cleaner the line art he can do. Because it kind of shows like the confidence in an artwork that you know that this stroke should look like this. But Other artists don't do this. For example, Karl Kopinski. I like it. Really fits with me. I kind of got bored with the things that he is drawing because it's really similar to each other. But I cannot say that his stuff is bad. Karl Kopinski. He also is in the same group, art group with Kim Jong Gi. Yeah, that's super, super Annie, right? Annie. <coughs> and recently I discovered they, they have like many more artists in They have so many artists in their team. Turns out they do, and it turns out it's like easily the strongest group of artists in any type of a studio or however to call it. They just have monsters in there. Yeah. I think, um, uh, have you seen uh, Elisa Ivanova's um, artwork before? Uh, I heard that name so much. Yeah, she's, she's, her line work is so good. So good. Uh. And sometimes I kind of wonder, like, how many hours they spent on like, drawing or line art. <laughs> like, again, is this just a matter of like, spending a fuckload of hours or something? Or they're like a secret? <laughs> no, man. I, I, I think um, I seen some of... Kim Young Ji's sketchbooks from like 10, 15 years ago, and mm. it's just like, ah, uh, it's still crazy, man. The mm, it's still it's like still... top top tier quality. <laughs> yeah. But on the other hand, we also like most likely tend to idolize him. So, the like the the view of sketchbook is kind of biased. You know how good he is. Maybe if it was not his sketchbook, maybe if it won't be that good. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we expect it to be good, so we want it to be. Yeah, I don't know. If, uh, I'm not sure if I've have. Is that is that a thing? You know? Uh, yeah, I, th I think is. It was. It seemed quite objectively good, man. It was like. Yeah, most likely. But uh, at the same time, no. But at the same time, he uh, it, it did have like a early version, you know, of Kim Jong Ji. If you know what I mean, it, you know, it, it yeah. did look like you know he leveled up a lot since then. But yeah, it's just he he had not achieved his final form then. <laughs> I mean, he still did not, hopefully, with his final form. I kind of wonder how, like, the, let's say, modern masters, uh, what they will do. 
I don't know, 10 hours or something like this, or 20 or 30 hours. Uh, hours, years. 30 hours, most likely they will do exactly the same thing. <laughs> but yeah, like what, what will be their goals and art, how it will look like. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because some, some artists actually don't change too much. You know, they don't like, you know, yeah, they don't like learn or they don't draw in a different way, you know, after a, a <laughs> long time. It, it, it's kind of, well, it, you know, even with uh, Craig Mullins, right, if you hear him, talk right he would say that he works in so many different ways like he goes he never does he approach a painting working in the same way um mm -hmm. uh, however like when you see his work you know it, it, all his work has that mullins vibe about it that's right like it's really easy to see what he is doing, that that he had done it that's but for example, like with Feng Zhu, the it's a really similar thing. He said that everybody does it the same way, like at his level. But I can clearly see like what he did, like like the finish, the quality to it. Mm. So, yeah. Because for example, the Feng Zhu now nowadays is like not a drawing. Or as far as I know, he has this like movie studio that they are making movies. So I wonder how how different artists will evolve like this. Yeah. Like for example, maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't think I will. But maybe in twenty years I will. Like, oh no, and that's uh, I drawing after like I I finished with boring for. So in those type of uh, things. Approach. They will change. That that's like a um, subject matter, though, as well, isn't it? Uh, kinda, yeah. Because you have like some artists that are doing like, oh, let's say Paul Bonner. Because I have, I don't think I have ever seen anything that is science fiction from him. I always have seen only fantasy for him, and a lot of trolls, goblins, and stuff like this. Yeah. And I don't think he ever changed like the the subject matter. I don't think he ever will. Mm. But it's not a bad thing. I don't mean bad thing. I kind of wonder where artists will go. They will decide. And I kind of wonder if, for example, if I will be like 40 years old, something like this. If there still will be like twenty year old guys that just make better artworks, they have like I don't know two years of experience. They are more skilled. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a you know that's a good question. I th I think I, a part of me feels as though like I've I'm already noticing that man. I'm already noticing that some of the, the next generation and stuff they're finding more. I don't want to say better, maybe better. They're finding all of the best tutorials and stuff now, mm -hmm. finding the more efficient, definitely efficient ways to work, right? But yeah, finding out, maybe even finding out ways of working that they prefer, right? And if you, if, if you prefer working in a certain way, I think that always yields um, good results, right? Mm -hmm. So if a person, you know, likes to work, um, I don't know, like with it with an oily kind of finish rather than, uh, say, you know, um, like a watercolor or a sketchy kind of finish. Then, so long as the person really loves working that way, then they're gonna, you know, they're gonna produce really awesome artwork uh, from it. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and nowadays it's like relatively easier, let's say, to like find a way to to do something. Like it's also kind of hard to me to say something like this because I, not like that I was born in an era where there were like no tutorials at all. I kind of already jumped into the fuckload of tutorials type of an era. But but still, nowadays it's much more like even like 
to compare today to like one year ago, like much more. Oh. More and more artists are like jumping into to the wagon of stuff and tutorials, and also making tutorials is nowadays easier because back in the days it like required a relatively powerful machine to like mm. record a screen and to edit the video. Nowadays, like almost every art that is more than capable of rendering without any problems with Yep. Yep, all of them, all of them kind of uh, tools are totally been taken advantage of. And <clears throat> now it's like even easier to edit videos because the programs are just made. Even with the stuff like, like that with the Procreate, it basically like records the entire painting. Of course, I know you that's like the button you don't don't care about anything else yeah i wonder about that actually because uh man I'd, I'd love to do some like recording type of stuff and i just wonder if uh yeah if it's uh if it, if it, if it is very highly noob friendly for someone like me <laughs> as far as i know it's just record and that's all. It will like record the entire painting. And as far as I know, it does not work in a way that records <coughs> records the video, but it's like recording each stroke, and it's like building up the uh, like not a video, but uh, like step by step, but recording every single. So you can like play it back. Kind of like, I don't know, a game of chess, like you can view every single move separately. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it will, it would make sense for me to like build an application that is recording the process like this because then you don't have to like record the frames where, for example, you are not working at all, which makes sense resource hmm. for a program to do this. Also, I'm kind of trying to, like, do you usually turn your Oh, no, no, that's because I did put, uh, I did put some uh, photos over it. I put some textures on it. <laughs> the, the lightning really nice. Oh, thanks. Let's see if it can get anywhere. I think uh, the lightning is a bit whacked out at the moment. Does this, like... Kinda of reminds me of the works of Antaridis with the like, light setup. It tends to do stuff like this quite a lot. Oh yeah. With like this really hard light and really dark shadows. Ah, right, right, right. And that makes me want to go a bit darker. <laughs> it is it is the black knight after all. True. has to be properly black and it's also like rendering the black materials is also really fun i would say and entertaining because it's relatively hard say, to render something that is black because like reflects the the light a bit differently yeah like, it's it harder tricky, it's man. much harder to make it look real yep So, one one thing for me is um, I I don't know like I, when I went back to the studio again <clears throat> I um, picked up my um, good old uh, Bible of art you know uh, Loomis uh, Loomis's creative illustration mm -hmm. and his words of wisdom were to. Find a good process that works for yourself, right? Find a good process. And that process, uh, mm -hmm. he, well, I think he defined his process, which was um, first start with the drawing, right? Blocking out. And then after blocking out, you, you divide your light and shadow shapes. 
and after you divide your light, so you, then you, fo you focus on dividing your light and shadow shapes, right? And then after you, which I've got to take a page from, from that um, advice now, actually, after you divide your light and shadow shapes, then uh, work on planes, right? Defining the planes. And then finally, after that, which is probably a long way away, is to um, work on the, um, accents and highlights. So, and then you, and you would leave your, you know, your, you know, your heart, your highest values and stuff until the end. Uh, and that was for him. And yeah, I've, I've, I think I've kind of been practicing a little bit like that, you know, and, uh, trying to divide the lights early and stuff. And then, yeah, just trying mm -hmm. to use that as a... Yeah, now I kind of like, like the process that you have, yeah, you have done. This is something that I ignored completely and I went all out with like the shiny metal type of a thing. And now I kind of feel this is not the way to go. <laughs> so <laughs> now I kind of feel like... Oh, I, no, no. I, the, 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 there's nothing wrong with shiny metals, man. Oh, rendering shiny metals is like... It's just I mean, uh, for the effect of wow, yeah. <laughs> but for the making it easier for myself to just not go crazy later with rendering everything. I don't think this is a good idea <laughs> to do <laughs> this. I feel like grouping the shadows and everything usually just works uh, in a favor because it's just like you're taking one step at a time and it's just easier. Yeah, well, one good um, practice I, I find with working, uh, working in a way that has um, your grouped values is when you when you do start to color and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You are you are limited, but then at the same time you have some creative freedom in the sense that you you can put whatever you know as money would say you know you can put whatever color mm -hmm. you like you like so long as it's the correct value it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what color color you put if it's the correct value and the sitting in the right shape it will it will work it just That's will true. work. So uh, yeah, just trying to kind of. Yeah. Also, there was like a small question from Roman because it turns out that my volume was like getting cut a bit, like that was lagging. Uh, uh -oh. I had like a noise gate open, so it wouldn't like capture the noise around me. So maybe this was a problem. I kind of lowered the the thing now. So if anyone has this problem, just let me know. Uh, yeah, but true. But for for the values, I. I feel, do you know the guy, uh, no, oh my god, how he was, what was his name? Uh, he was the young guy, he had this like crazy, like clean rendering. Naran uh, Batar Gambold? Oh, does not ring a bell that name, does. Uh, he is like a relatively like okay don't say like a new guy he is like relatively young guy but every time when he draws something he does this really like a really clean line art with like a really clean geometry and then he feels the shadow then he feels the like light layer then he makes like the the colors and then he renders everything so and I have seen this process and I was like fuck this is this easy and then I tried it and it was that easy like okay maybe not that easy because the, the results were not like great at the first time but like having this like really methodical approach to every single step when you are doing art is making is it can make life like light years easier because you don't have to like think about tens 10 different things at the same time you just like do it so for example this is also the way the the Constantinos is working. He he like separates every single like layer, every single like fa like light phenomenon to a different layer. So he has different different layer for speculars, different layer for something, different layer for something, and then he just combines them all, and it all just looks good. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, I think I know what you mean by his his approach. Yeah. That was an, that's another cool approach actually. There's an approach where people use um, 
uh, ambient occlusion layers and stuff mm -hmm. and then they, they paint that and that's like whoa crazy yeah, I, I feel i will try to go this way more this way with, with this guy yeah i feel like i want to try that as well one day because I, i'm usually trying to to do this type of a thing when i'm like working at something that is a bit more complex but at some point i'm like nah and <laughs> Then I don't, and after like I don't know, five hours, I'm like, man, why I am just making this harder for myself, like without any reasons whatsoever. Like for example, the burning skeleton that I have been painting recently, it yeah. was such an easy thing to do in a sense that I tried to organize everything. Like I okay, more or less, I did all the different like separate layers, and it just made the render look okay. Uh, like really quickly so yeah mm, yeah I, so i think i will like try to to follow this type of a thing to like make shadows first and now i know the first thing that i will most likely like curse myself upon is n not like finishing the line art so <laughs> i'm already like kind of trying to uh, like skip a step but I will worry about it later. And for like a tricks, for example, like, is there a trick that you learned at some point while doing art that just made everything easier for you? Like apart from like organizing your artworks and everything like layers and stuff like this. Um. Let me think. Uh, Something that was not, let's say, particularly complex, like that was not like a magic technique that requires you to like press 50 buttons at the same time or something like this with one hand, but just like a small tip that when you tried it, you were like, wow, this is it. And it, it made like your life instantly easier. I... I think I think clipping masks or locking the pixels that was really good I think mm -hmm. that, that, that 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 was like a, I mean I I've, I'm not I haven't used it now um but <clears throat> I think yeah that that has uh, that that really helped me really helped me um I, the, maybe another thing a random thing would be like um for the last couple of weeks, right, I I haven't been able to use my mouse, right? <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a flipping idiot. I've left I left my mouse in like a weird pocket in my uh, backpack, right? And and I thought I left it in the studio, and I hadn't been to the studio for like um, you know like a good uh -huh. two weeks, two weeks, right? So I kind of was painting at home without you know with, with just my um, uh, without a mouse, basically, I'm using the trackpad to move and find things, or using the Wacom stylus to find things. Uh -huh. But the main thing that I lost, right, and the thing that I can't live without at all, right, is um, uh, a scroll wheel for using my scroll wheel as my um, uh, brush brush size. Now that I just I, I can't, I simply can't live without oh. that, man. Yeah, and I, one it's funny because I've noticed. Um, I don't know if you've have you, have you heard of Ahmed Alduri? Ahmed Alduri. It's um, got yeah. it's got quite a popular um, art YouTube page and stuff. Anyway, it's not just Ahmed Alduri. Uh, lo loads of these um, loads of these um, artists, right? They're all looking at this um, at this um, peripheral. It's kind um. of like the you know one of them gamepad things, like the Razer Nostromo or or Razer. Your Tartarus or whatever it's called, right? Uh -huh. Or the Logistic G6, right? But it's like a... I don't know what it's called, but it, this peripheral, it's got a whole bunch of dials on it. I don't know if you've seen it. It's got like loads of dials on it. And one of the key features that people, you know, these guys mad kept on promoting about it was, oh, look, you know, it can it can do... Um, it can... Um, you can put your brush size on it, right? Mm -hmm. And... You know, you can put your brush size to scroll in, and I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, loads of people are liking that product for that. And for me, 
ever since ever since I had my first ever game padding, right, which is the Nostromo Belkin N fifty two T E. He's got the most stupid name. <laughs> I used to play World of Warcraft on it, and that had a scroll wheel on it. And since I started painting with it, I always used the scroll wheel, you know, and I couldn't live without it. Oh. And um, you know, all the other ways of doing it, you know, when you, you press the Alt and uh, Alt and right click, is just to me, it's just too tedious. I, 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 I've never found that comfortable or anything. And using the express keys on the Wacom is okay. I kind of did like using the express keys on the, the Wacom, but it's, it's you know, how many buttons have you got on your express keys? Just still a strip and a few buttons, right? Uh -huh. So you need it. You need it on your gamepad. And you know the brackets, pressing the bracket keys to go up and down in brush size, that's just like, it takes forever to do that. Forever. I was so, always using the brackets, but continue. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. You, you need to use, the skull really just, you know, it just goes up, down really fast, right? And so what I did was... Um, you know, it's funny because all of these people are buying this new uh, um, uh, peripheral, right? and I'm thinking to myself like, what I did was uh, buy a gaming mouse, right? Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's and, true. Yeah, and you know the gaming mouse I've got is uh, it's got all of the buttons on the side, and uh, they've got all of my go-to hotkeys and stuff with modify keys and everything on them. Uh -huh. And the scroll wheel on the top that wasn't programmable. So instead, what I did was, you know, you can get this um, app thing here. Uh, it's called X button mouse control, and uh -huh. you could you could change the scroll wheel to your um, bracket right. keys, and then and you could literally map it just for Photoshop, right? And you know that that's just does the job, you know. And I feel as though having a mouse is the best because you could still use it to click on stuff and move around and stuff as well. Uh -huh. And it's got all of the buttons on the side. It's a scroll wheel on it. So to me, that's kind of the best oh. peripheral I've used um, uh, so far. But yeah, I can't, I can't having not been able to just um, switch between a million brush sizes, uh, you know, uh, as and when I need. I just it just completely destroys my workflow, and I can't do anything. So <laughs> I think if if I advise anyone, maybe advise that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't leave your mouse <laughs> in another pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny because when you started talking about the brush size, I was like, oh, I know I was always like the, the ugly animal, the, the ugly kid with using the brackets. Like everybody who saw that I am using the brackets, like almost only the brackets, looks at me like with disgust. And I was like, uh, like, it's cool. <laughs> like, I like using brackets. No, it's It's fine. And everybody was like, man, like, don't just, just, I don't know, use anything else, but not the brackets. It's like the slowest and the worst way to like work with brushes. And I was always trying to like, remember the combination for the keys, how to make like this alt and right click. And even now when you were talking, I was like, wait, there was this shortcut on, on this alt and, and something or control. And I was like pressing everything at once and trying to search for it, like to remind it of myself. And now when you know, <laughs> mentioned it, I, I was like, oh, so this was the shortcut because I always was like, I need to like look for this shortcut. And after like 15 minutes, I forgot about it like all the time. And now I tried to use it and it's like, it, it's really nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's 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 all right, and I I kind of tried to adjust to using it, um, you know, when I didn't have the the, the you know the scroll mm -hmm. wheel uh, in hand, um, but the problem is, you know, it, it's it's easy to be precise and have control over going, you know, big, right? Mm -hmm. But when it when it goes small, as soon as you let go, it kind of just jumps up or down, you know, because it's hard to control the, the 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 tiny, you know, the subtle differences. It's hard to control. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Uh huh. Yeah, and th that that really annoys me because generally when we're painting, what we're gonna go up like ten pixel sizes, drop down ten pixel sizes, especially when we're kind True. of like rendering and stuff, right? So in those areas, you, you don't want to just you know fiddle around and get it wrong right mm -hmm. whereas uh, i feel just the scroll keys just has all the control and it's, it's pretty fast the, the, the only problem with that is um again ask any like you know um like a master or something and you know they'll tell you like your 
you could you're wrong. build it. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. You know, you, you could build up very bad habits, right? Where, you know, general habit in painting that they say is to work from big brush and then, you know, work down to uh, smaller brushes, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, so for me, I, you know, I, I kind of just work organically. If I'm in an area and I feel like painting that area and I need a smaller brush, I just scroll down. If I, if I when I move to a bigger area, then, you know, I just scroll up. And, you know, maybe some people will say, like, no, stick to a bigger brush, mm -hmm. focus on all of the big shapes, big areas first, and then then change to a middle brush and then, you know, um, and then kind of yeah, work, work your the way down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's it's like. Yeah, well, but yeah. I know I know what you're saying. For for me, it's I I just like to like make all those small details and everything. It's just fun. I know it's mm -hmm. not usually the best way to start a painting, but well, it, it sometimes just works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's true. But yeah, one one of the things that I was thinking when you like started uh, saying about the the mouse and everything was also to learn some shortcuts. Like if there is something that makes the work lighters easier, is the shortcuts shortcuts. If you know the shortcuts that you can use in a program, it will just be easier for you and definitely tones faster. Yeah. Because a yeah, lot of yeah, people yeah. are like click, like making 10 clicks, like for me with the brackets, I usually use every single shortcut that I can. Uh, and the brackets are like the, like taking the time that I managed to save while using other shortcuts. Uh, it, and it depends on like what, what you want to do. Like say, if, for example, if, if you're the, um, if you're the, you know, your layer heavy, adjustments layer you know very mm. photoshoppy photo bashy kind of person right then you have to learn some shortcuts mm -hmm. man. otherwise uh, it's impossible to work yeah you're just gonna be like making your process so much longer like you know I, i've got all of my um, adjustment you know layers and uh you know hue saturation all of these mapped you know and you, you, you need to have it Mm -hmm. these things for, for that kind of work that's true but I mean in the end just do whatever works for you it's also kind of funny because usually when I see someone who is like crazy skilled and let's say is on the like older spectrum of the industry uh, one yeah. thing they tend to have like Photoshop CS3 uh, it's yeah, like a standard yeah, yeah, yeah. for them and really often they will use zero shortcuts at all. They will just yeah. go and manually click image, something, something. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah, always yeah. like, wow, like this is like the old way of working or what? Because it means it kind of makes a lot of sense when you are trying to explain something because this way you are not like dashing through everything like a madman and everybody can see what like you are actually doing but sometimes it's just like frustrating to look at someone who is working like in this manner of like clicking and searching constantly for the same thing like they they clicked at something like five minutes ago and now they are like again searching for for the button <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's it, it's it's funny it's like um I, you know, I, I remember seeing Mullins work, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for him to change brush size, he presses right click. Yeah, and, and, moves, it, the and then he moves the slider. And he moves the slider. And I'm thinking, like, what the heck? That is like the most long way to do anything. But, yeah, it's just like to each their own, man. You know? and he's got the most patient way of working. And I think instead of being a frantic, crazy person <laughs> working, right? Which I feel I kind of work that way than uh, being a very patient and decisive, mm -hmm. focused. Yeah, and it kind of gives you like, uh, like uh, just now I'm trying to search for like one brush and because recently I have downloaded like thousands of brushes, now everything is like lagging down. Uh, it also makes, it uh, kind of gives you like the small break to process the things that you are doing which is also nice. Yeah, and I think the one of the bigger things uh, about like improving or 
painting right and stuff is being deliberate, right? The more deliberate you can be with your brushstrokes and with any mm-hmm. choice you make on the canvas or whatever, right? I think it's uh, it's going to help in the long sure. run and help your efficiency, isn't it? That's true. Yeah, because also this is the other thing that I noticed. Uh, if you are pro, you are not like sketching like crazy. You are just taking your time to like place every single brush stroke and the uh, end result is much better. Like uh, even with the sketches, like if someone knows how to draw, they will like slowly but surely just make a sketch and it will look good. And for example, for me, when I'm sketching, I'm really a lot of like searching of how like one of my teachers would say in the in the school I'm searching for the shape which is yeah. not like the best way to <laughs> to approach this I feel but it does work <laughs> he did the button combinations again <laughs> It did happen again. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, pre- I pressed the button again, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is what I thought. The problem is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, instinct press. Mm. You know, it's like habit. I, I press it accidentally. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's... no problems. Sorry, man. I, th- I think I've got the share screen up. Um, yeah, it's working. So, <laughs> easy. Yeah, it's also this is one of the things about the shortcuts. Like uh, half of the time, you don't even think about using them. You just <laughs> press them, and you are like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, 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 uh. And also for our things, how do you? Because usually, uh we kind of do share the approach of like it does not matter how someone does something as long as the job is done how do you feel about using like external applications that for example draw ellipses for you that basically allow you to like choose the ellipse and just go with it uh ellipses uh yeah i mean uh, ellipses are damn hard to do right <laughs> they can uh-huh. be so hard to do i mean i i think i think um it's i'd always say it's better to just practice it right and to zoom in because my um, colleague at work he he kind of was um i don't want to say he's an ellipse master but he loved drawing cars and vehicles man and whenever you're drawing cars and vehicles you're going to draw in a lot of hubcaps uh-huh. and yeah so he, he he the way he works and does the line art is completely different to, to the way i do it and he's constantly rotating you know, he draw a line in the best way and he'd rotate 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 um, and this is all for know, me <laughs> yeah and I, I love watching him draw you know he just and I wish I could draw like that myself. Like, I sometimes rotate for like hard, like um, hard surface straight lines, right, to get a very confident line. But uh, generally, because I'm drawing organic stuff, I never kind of rely on that. So um, oh. yeah, like uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, and I know my friend, he, uh, my colleague, he, he, his um, skills in drawing and ellipses and stuff, and his. Hubcaps, <laughs> these hubcaps are really awesome. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say take it the hard way. That's my no. advice. Uh, it's kind of funny now you mentioned because usually when I do anything, I like to rotate the screen. I just like it. I just if I rotate the screen, it just feels easier for me to like perform <laughs> some some tasks. So yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. Even when I'm like removing something from like erasing there is like no necessity at all to like rotate the screen but i just like do it, doing it <laughs> it kind of i think with, with huh? me i i i like uh flipping the image that's my thing of also flip flipping so the much. image also but rotating <laughs> just just also does it for me 
I also have seen uh, sometimes some artists are beside flipping the image, they tend to like rotate the image completely like um, bottom up and uh, they tend to like draw and paint sometimes uh, like bottoms up like inverted or well, inverted vertically inv inverted oh really I, I i haven't ever really done that uh, i heard you this is that? a really good way to actually practice proportions and everything because then you are and also to, oh. to check for the shapes because then you are not like looking at something and your brain does not process it in a way of this is an armor and I see an armor, but it is more prone to just see the shape. Interesting, way, interesting. Yeah, I mean, maybe try yeah. rotating it and you will see if it works for you. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I might give that a go actually. See if it does what it says it's meant to do. Let's check those shapes. <sighs> Yeah, and also as Roman said, this was the problem that I had with like making a quick videos for uh, for Instagram because I'm rotating all the time, and if you are like making a video and you sped up the process like one thousand times, you basically end up with like a spinning wheel, <laughs> not a video. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is one of the things that makes it really fucking hard to like do. I'm catching up. I started doing shadows. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I'm like stuck. I'm just like, I need it to. Colors are looking weird. Everything, it's just like I'm fighting at the moment, but hopefully it'll come out on the right side. Window brush settings. Transfer. Now I'm using my favorite brush that is like hard on one edge and soft on the other edge oh dude your design is looking so grim i really like the helmet i love what that is... helmet i love that helmet is so tiny and yours but and then it's got that giant neck neck armor yeah i i kind of liked it too i'm glad you liked it because this was like one of the things when i did it in a sketch i was like Fuck yeah. Like this this thing that it has like the shoulders in here and that the neck is like really long and the traps are like really big and the head is like this. <laughs> and the pierced nipples. Yep. If you are a demon and you don't have a pierced nipples, are you a demon? <laughs> <laughs> right. As simple as that. Yeah, but definitely, uh, even now when I'm just like, when I did the sketch and I'm trying to like cast some shadows, now I feel the entire painting is getting much more organized. I already feel it will be much easier. Do you usually make hard shadows first and then soften them up? Or do you go with like mid-tones, half-tones and everything at the same time? Mid-turns, half-turns, um, ah, like, sometimes. You, so you would say you would prefer to like cast hard shadows first, like kind of one, zero, one type of a thing? Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, sometimes, yeah, just, di I, I don't know, like I, I have different ways of working, man. You know, sometimes I, I do, um, uh, yeah, you know, to go for the hard, Hard cast and stuff first, and sometimes I do work, you know, through the value range. Yeah. It's like if, if there is anything that I really need to like figure out how to do, is to like how to decide on what, how much of a shadow I can I want to have. So for example, if you have this like threshold type of a thing, when it basically like with the sliders, you decide how much white or how much black do you want to have. This is one of the things that I couldn't like grasp properly in a painting. Like sometimes how do I decide if this will be like a deep shadow or if this will be like a mid tone. 
and I kind of feel like just dividing the shadows into like this is in the shadow, this is in the light, no mid stone, no mid tones whatsoever, makes the the thing a bit easier to like decide yeah. on the process. That, that is, uh, yeah, I, I do get kind of um, confused with that as well. There's something constantly like blinking on my screen, some sort of an application. I have no idea what it is. Uh, yeah, but actually... You've, you've, you've inspired me now, man. Uh, I'm gonna go back into uh, design mode. <laughs> yeah, so... We learned a thing from each other. You want to improve on the design, I want to organize my shadows better. <laughs> it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, so usually if you are doing something like, let's say like this, like in your painting, uh, is it a way that you work sometimes? Like you go really simple at first and then when you have like a, basically prepared like a 3D render for yourself, then you like sculpt in it? Um, like the, the 3D render is like a, in a, not quotes, not in a brackets, in, in those, like between... Uh, how how do they say it? How, 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 how do you mean? Um, mm, because now, like now, you did like basically a render, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and do you work sometimes in a way that you are not designing something first, but you are making like it's basically like a low poly painting, and then you sculpt in it. Like by sculpt, I mean like paint properly, but you sculpt the shapes to be much more complex. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I, I, I enjoy working like that a lot more. You know, um, it, it, it kind of, you know, it, it's that if, if you see um, uh, those YouTube videos, right, and you see people just splashing paint about, right, you know, Ala Prima paintings or mm -hmm. whatever, right, and they, they just, they splash paint about and suddenly right at the end you have, it just suddenly magically turns into something. Right, and I've always loved that approach, right? And uh, yeah, like so, I I'd kind of would practice, um, uh, yeah, starting with something b uh, basic, and then you you know you you chip into that, and you just kind of refine it and refine it and refine it. Now, some that's the thing. Some people are uh, have always done that, and they've always you know they've n never done anything else, right? And because of that, they they paint and. They can design while painting and stuff, right? And I feel as though I can do that a little bit, you know, I can do that a little bit. And, um, but for me, like, line is, and the contour is where I really get the um, design stuff going, right? But one thing you don't know about, um, uh, well, yeah, one thing that you don't know about line art, right? when you're designing is how light hits it. So if, if you were to draw something in line up, right, and then, mm -hmm. you know, you start putting your shadow shapes and your light shapes on it, and then you find out that, oh, you know what, I don't like the way the light hits it and the shapes it kind of uh, leaves. That that could be a problem. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing. Um, I don't know, sorry, I think I went <laughs> off the tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, but I get what you meant. Yeah, it, it was clear. But, but true. Yeah, basically, like, even, like, having the ability to, like, do everything at the same time must be, like, really nice. Like, it must yeah. be nice to, like, feel that you can design and draw everything at the same time. It must be so much easier. But it also requires, like, fuckload more of training to to do nicely. But recently when like even after like talking like with you and getting some feedbacks and everything, uh, I have much more appreciation to works, for example, like in a berserk for Kentaro Miura stuff and other like comic book artists because they of their ability to like simplify shapes, shapes to but still making them like really complex. So mm -hmm. they are making it much easier, much easier to read, but and they get rid of all the unnecessary like small details and everything. 
like this is what was always doing like this is what i always appreciated in a comics like the simplification of shapes like the graphic read and i know i have been for a really long time i don't uh, like not purposefully i have been ignoring it in like my artworks i was going more for like kind of a lot of details like fake it till you make it type of a thing and now i kind of appreciate like okay like grouping the shadows stuff like this like to make an interesting like graphical shape and then to like render everything yeah which like work, works really well especially since it basically allows you to like increase the amount of detail just by like making the the shapes a bit more complex so yeah but again this is a hard thing to to do yeah man. Oh, now I, I regret not uh going back and refining the the lines a bit more man yeah tell me about it <laughs> <laughs> but now now most likely it will be like a shit show of trying to guess what i meant because there is no way i will remember what i meant with those lines the next time i open this guy up <laughs> So yeah, and also I guess the the entire video now be a little bit misleading because it's still called like the Carver redesign. So if anyone will like open the video and will see like this is the Carver, will be like what? So how does the Black Knight looks like <laughs> if this is the Carver? <laughs> but I'm really glad you randomized like the the number two was a carver i don't remember who like picked picked those the this number because i asked for it like in a stream for someone to pick it but whoever did it great job perfect time <laughs> and also the thing with when someone is like working with this like ambient occlusion type of an approach uh, and like painting all the different separate layers of light and everything uh, it makes the entire painting look just more believable because you get this um, this like 3d render quality much easier because of all the passes yeah. that you have yeah 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 and this is a thing that is like relatively hard to to achieve while painting everything like uh like let's say the the normal way the casual way okay. I, don't know. I wanted the cast shadow to be sharp and uh like this uh, i'd never what is the word for when the surface is stopped being lit by a light is this like a self shadow or something like this Let's just say that again. Like a self shadow. Uh, for what? Uh, when because if you you have a cast shadow type of a thing, and you yeah. also have a shadow where, for example, on a cylinder, when the the sil when the shape just stops being lit by a light, and then you usually have like a soft transition to a shadow. How do you call this shadow? Because I'm not sure how to how to name it properly. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Is it the uh, uh, occlusion? Do you mean no? Mm, no, no to say it. No. Uh, okay, uh, uh, can you look at my screen now? Yeah. Uh, if you have, for example, like a cube <coughs> or whatever, uh, this is a beautiful cube. Uh, this basically is a cast shadow. Yeah. No, no, that that's a form shadow. And the what? That's a form shadow. But it's, it's basically like the the shadow that the cube is like throwing on the ground. So yeah, yeah, that's that's the cast. Oh no, sorry. I think well, maybe your screen is a little bit behind. So ah, yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, your screen is behind. Now I've seen your cube. Your cube okay, is starting to come up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now the red thing is not lit by light. And how do you call this shadow? Because in Polish language, it's basically called like a cień własny, which means like a self shadow, like 
shadow of itself, but is there a word for it? I'm just waiting for your your uh, your little uh, drawing uh -huh. to catch up with the red. <laughs> Oh, I think there we go. Red is coming. That's the uh, bounce. Is that the bounce? I, I mean, bounce light or the reflection? No, no, no. I don't say anything about light. Only about shadows. Oh, I think that's the the, the form shadow. Form. Ah, okay. Form. Sh yeah, it yeah. would make sense. It's a form shadow then. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So basically, what I wanted to say is, I started doing the shadows. I decided, okay, form shadows, soft cast shadows. Uh, hard and I did the opposite <laughs> oh right 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 I right, right. Yeah. Up the, the wrong shadows which is also kind of a good rule base I think for like like if someone is like relatively new to art like the rule of like form shadow being soft and cast shadow being sharp is a, like a really nice rule to, to remember yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, that stuff, like, it just help, it's, it's helped me so much. It's helped me so much in, uh, I think, my overall, like, career and stuff and mm -hmm. everything. I think I, I still rely on it completely, you know, I, I think it's... Yeah, yeah. because you, you don't really need much more than that, honestly. Like, this is, like, a nice rule to, to just remember. So if anyone is still watching, remember. This is a good rule. So yeah. Uh, do you want to still go for like, I don't know, 15 minutes or something like this? Because we are streaming for like over two hours right now at this point. Oh, has it been two hours? Yeah. Damn, man. Yeah, okay. time, time's flashed. 15 minutes. All right. Yeah, I'm good for 15 minutes. Okay. So if, if anyone is watching, 15 minutes and we are wrapping the stream up. Yeah, I've got, got to see if I can super fast paint over all of this uh, crappy over lines I then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I will kind of try to like mimic the, the Constantino's way of working. I will later search for some of his tutorials to include in the video. <laughs> and try to make like all the colors and textures and on multiply layers and specular layer and everything layer and we will see how it will go. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've given that a go either. I'd, I'd love to try that as well, actually. <clears throat> the cool thing is that, uh, especially in the way he is working, is that because he controls, like he basically starts with like a gray model and when he finishes the gray gray model type of a painting, then he likes uh, just applies all the layers and just the, the instant 3D look is there. Yeah, which is all which I would say is like currently the thing that I aim for the most, like to achieve this like 3D feel to it. But yeah. There was actually I, I seen this crazy tutorial somebody put up right, and um, <laughs> it's crazy. You you should check it out and, and mm -hmm. try it because I know, I know you'll be interested in it. Um, so somebody painted normal maps. Right? Uh, and then they, I think I know where uh, this is going, but continue. <laughs> yeah, and then they went into three D layer mode and stuff, and then they, you know, they were able to just change the light direction from, you know, any different direction. And yeah, the, the 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 result that they achieved was you had a very CG look to it, man. I was mm. like, well, I do think this tech, this was this an old video. Uh, somebody on Twitter um, uh, put it up, and it was fairly new technique I've seen. Uh, I've seen no, because this was this is actually an <laughs> extremely old technique, and I think. Uh, someone in the level up group, like really long as time ago, uh, did this in the Darek Zabrowski and Michał Kus and uh, Jonas Dero podcast, like they had. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Someone did this with like an elephant, but they imported the yeah. elephant and they used some filters to generate the normal map, I believe. And then they like were 
like re releasing the entire painting like within some seconds with some like black magic trickery and stuff like <laughs> this so i have seen it and i wouldn't be surprised if it was like exactly the same method to approach a painting crazy man pretty crazy but yeah th this is like one of the things that my girlfriend always laughs uh, like at me because for example when i want to buy a kettle because now i'm like basically in the process of buying a kettle for like house i want to have a kettle that connects to wi-fi and bluetooth and everything that i can control from my bed and stuff like this i just like those gimmicks but <laughs> it's exactly the same thing as painting the normals this is a thing that most likely i will do once in my entire life and never use it again <laughs> so and this is kind of how I feel with all the all the tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I, I know. I, I'm the same as well. Like I've tried like loads of different types of tricks before, and it, it, this the thing is where some of these tricks are useful. Like you know that the the uh, 3D layer stuff that your your friend does and the ambient occlusion method of doing things. Mm -hmm. I think where that's really useful is that you, you tend to learn more about the lighting stuff and how it interacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it actually works well to teach to, to teach yourself as well. True. And this is also why I really think everybody, like every single artist should work with 3D and sculpting and everything, because then you just basically like yeah. show to your brain i look this stuff looks like this just remember it and it will be like the painting will be easier because you are so yeah. used to like looking at a rough 3d with like a perfect yeah. light all the time that it will just be easier and that's all uh -huh. and this is why i have been like putting away learning zbrush in like i don't know 10 years in a row <laughs> at this point Easy brush, right? Hmm. Easy brush, don't you? Uh, sometimes for like a really basic stuff, like I can navigate in it, but and I I can sculpt something like simple, without going too crazy uh, with all the details. I mean, I can add details, but by any means, I cannot make like a proper three D model with like good, I don't know, topology and everything. Like most likely, it will be like a really homebrew get the type of a model. Mm. Yeah, because I think, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's funny actually. Um, I don't know if, uh, can can you remember? <laughs> it's actually a good um, time to say it. You know, uh, my Blood Knight that I done before, the, the, this uh, Black Knight that I done uh, before. I don't know if you remember seeing it. And. Uh... The drawing? Uh, yeah. The, the, no, 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 the, no, no, not the drawing, the, the painting. Uh, yes, the one on the red background with... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, so that, um, I, uh, when I did that, I couldn't just think in my head or design uh, a really, you know, complicated shield you know with like light interacting in a, in a crazy way and stuff right uh -huh. so i um i yeah i went into uh i went into um zbrush and i designed the helmet and the shield mm -hmm. in zbrush and i literally just kind of you know print screened it and uh put it over my uh, uh illustration and i, I drew over it and it, it worked so well, man. You know, it helped so much. But yeah, I just if, if it works, it works. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just yeah, I don't, I don't know why I've not done any of that anymore. Yeah, sometimes it's like the the simplest. Uh, I mean, uh, it works if you know what you are doing with it. If you have no idea how to work with form and everything, then it won't won't help that much. So, yeah, because a lot of like, let's say people who are starting out will hear something like this and they will just paste a 3D model, but like it won't help them much if they don't understand at least the basics of light and how it should interact with the form and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I mastered the skill, but 
when I get a 3D model, I think I get a pretty good understanding of what is going on with the light and why stuff looks the certain way. So, yeah, I, I think I, I need to mess around more. with the render passes a bit more as well because there's certain things like you know the gloss pass or something that I just mm -hmm. kind of think to myself, hmm, what, what, what is that? You know, what does that do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in this case, the name is pretty self explanatory, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know i've always wanted to actually study you know um you know when uh you see somebody post up their 3d work and it's got all of the different layers in there mm -hmm. and yeah i've kind of wanted to recreate that just as a studying practice and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean i don't oh, honestly i don't think there's a better person for something like this than than constantinos cantiridis because as far as I know, as far as I understood him correctly, uh, he is studying something with like light and everything. So he like he knows this stuff not only by guessing but by actually understanding it. That way, man. You know, I think that that's the way we've got to teach ourselves because the more we understand it, the better it'll help in our work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, you know, if you see a Mullins, yeah, he'll he <coughs> he recommends going to this website uh, that teaches you about the Rayleigh effect or, or something which is like how light works in like a proper scientific way mm -hmm. and I went to it and it's just like you know just complete science and I'm thinking like damn I'm like <laughs> yeah maybe I should learn this but it's gonna help me and you know and uh, yeah it's yeah crazy stuff man crazy complete stuff. science the sign is sun is bright so <laughs> It shines and it makes things light. Exactly. That's that's all we need, man. That's all we need. <laughs> yeah. Also, a really nice thing that recently I started uh, using a bit more is, for example, if I have a sketch, to draw like a side view of a sketch and then just draw a line with the uh, with the light angle that I have to just see how long the shadow should be or where the light would hit the, the silhouette, which also makes things much easier because you can just quickly, like... Um, um, yeah, I, I don't... I, I think I need to do that more, actually. I, I think I some, sometimes I do, because sometimes when I'm feeling something is not right and I do this and I feel like, wow, like this shadow will be 10 times longer than I thought it would be, which is really cool. Yeah, actually, I think I have done it in the sense that I've I've drawn a little picture of a, a sun, you know, at the top corner, mm -hmm. or a camera, and it just just kind of pointing out which direction, and yeah, it just keeps keeps me thinking. Yeah, like, oh, like okay, if you do remember the the angle and you are consistent with it, then you most likely don't need to do it. But uh, even for stuff like highlights and stuff <laughs> like this, just to like not add a highlight somewhere where it shouldn't actually be. Mm. I, I think I will like maybe try to off screen to do like a small like sketch like this because I don't feel it's the most interesting thing to have on stream. <laughs> and also blending modes. Blending modes are like a king. For oh, like yes. for like adding the light because I don't know if you can you see the, the my screen now. Yeah. Uh, okay, soon you will you will see when I'm like sliding the blending modes so you can see how nicely it allows me to like add a light to to the sketch. Well, one thing I've kind of been using recently, I think, from your uh, inspiration was um, uh, smudge kind of been using smudge uh, a little bit more now smudge is great it's definitely a great tool it's kind of funny because i was like a huge uh like i was really like shitting on a smudge tool when i was studying at academy of fine arts and my friend was like yo this is great you definitely should use smudge and i was like no this is not the way you should need to you should learn how to blend everything by hand and <laughs> now i am like yeah i'm going to smudge every fucking thing <laughs> Yeah, you can kind of, it allows you to be uh, a bit rough, right? And then you can, mm -hmm. and, and you even like kind of just uh, drop in like lots of different um, 
uh, colors and stuff, and then when you blend it together, it's yeah. just like, yeah, nice. It just kind of comes out you know, good. It just works as it should work. Yep. Well, normal. And also, one of the things that I really need to learn is like I think I need to work more with like the proper black and white, uh, like uh, paintings where I will just like work on the more in the values to just get better understanding on how to like how to get a proper spectrum of light for the render to to appear to make it look nicer because a lot of a lot of the times i'm not sure that like let's say that my highlights are like light enough and that my dark tones are dark enough i sometimes feel uh, it's like I'm kind of guessing like how light, uh, reflected light should be or how dark it should be. Mm. Uh, the bounce light, how, how much it will lead like the shadows. Like because the only rule that I know is that there there is not a physical possible way that the bounce light will be like brighter than a cast light. But yeah, yeah. This is like the only rule in the in those matter that I know there is I'm kind of trying to add this right now like this like rim light and bounce light type of a thing and also there's like this really cool tutorial that I I said like I talk about several times already in the stream from Sam Smith, the guy who was doing the color keyframes for the uh, Klaus movie. Uh, he made like a really cool, really simple to follow tutorial on how to like render forms and everything, basically by oh. using multiple blending mode. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, and it's also re really cheap. It's like, I don't know, $10 or something like this. And it's like basically adding all the light with multiplied layer, all in colors. And when I try to do it, I don't know, maybe do you, you remember the, the painting that I have done with the, uh, like a giant scarab type of a thing and a goblin on a desert? Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, I basically did this painting while studying like this tutorial. And it was like one of the easiest painting that I have ever done. Okay. Because like the, the method was just really easy to follow. And sometimes processes, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what this was one of the tutorials that I wish I have seen when I was starting out because like it was not existing back then. But if I would if I had seen this tutorial when I was starting out, the whole thing will be ooh, much, much, much easier. Like all that painting and learning how to draw and everything. Mm. Yeah, uh, Roman just, just said it in a chat that because I, I was talking about this course last time and he just said that it blew his mind. So as I said, this is a good tutorial. <laughs> Mm. I've got a gonna hit me up, man. Yep, I will send it to you, like the link. And the cool part is, it's not like twenty hours long. It's like I don't know, two hours long, one hour long, or something like this. But it's so like direct and to the point that it's really easy to follow. Yeah. Okay. We we got uh, fifteen minutes. I I believe. So it's one, yep. one on the, of the longer streams, so. Damn, man, it's been so quick. Yeah, it's that's so fast. Time flies. But this is like one that's... of the best monsters in the game, so no wonder time flies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically, can you zoom in a bit? Like, 
compare the, the things. Yeah, so this is what we have done. Uh, I managed to lay some shadows. You basically managed to finish an illustration. So... No, 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 no. <laughs> you came up with an amazing design. Mine is just looks like a hodgepodge mess of stuff. <laughs> On a mini, <laughs> yours looks better. <laughs> No, 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 no. We can discuss ah. design after finishing rendering. <laughs> <laughs> like yours, man. Your design is like so sick. I changed my shield just to, just to like, uh, after I seen your shield, I was like, man, that's so sick. <laughs> I've got to change it. <laughs> and then I just made, I just added more spikes on mine. But yeah, I don't the think Diablo. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but... I, don't, I don't think I actually, uh, you know, so Your, yours see. is like closer to the reference because it actually has like a shield and a school on it. Mine is a bit more like, oh, a giant school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like yours. Is, yeah, it's got like a. It's part of the armor. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, maybe we will like continue on this guy. Like I don't know together and. I have no idea how many streams we will see how much we can push this further. So I hope everybody enjoyed looking, watching yeah. the stream and everything and that you learned something new and that, will, that it was more entertaining than it usually is when I am just yeah. all by myself. So yeah, thanks for joining in uh, today, Naimu. It was a pleasure and yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. See I ya. had so much fun and yep, see you later, dude. Yep. See <laughs>